How to read and draw a scaled floor plan. Scale in architectural drawing is not easy to wrap your head around, so stick with me, let's break this down. Good day and welcome in the last video of this architectural drawing course. We started looking at floor plans and what that four minute video actually started going through was what is a floor plan and how to start reading and drawing floor plans for yourself. If you haven't already watched that video, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend going back over it and watching that video. That card thing is up in the top corner there, so you can click on that and it'll take you to that video. So if you have already seen that video, that video explained what architectural floor plans are and how to start drawing them for yourself but it brought up this question of where does scale come into it what is scale and what is scale drawings let's take for example you are drawing this 45 centimeter or 18 inch roller on a piece of paper if you were drawing it at its normal scale it would be 45 centimeters long or 18 inches long as that would be an accurate representation of its actual scale now that would be fine to do as this would fit on maybe like an a2 page quite nicely but what happens when you've got say an architectural floor plan of a house can you imagine trying to draw a whole house at its original scale on a piece of paper it just wouldn't go well that would be a huge drawing so drawing to scale generally means drawing something with an accurate representation of what it actually is, but usually it's in a shrunken version of itself. It's scaled down. Otherwise, it can also be scaled up in an enlarged version of it. However, in architectural drawing, you don't necessarily do that at all, to be honest. We really only look at scaling things down, as you can imagine trying to draw a piece of furniture. Because if we're trying to draw a piece of furniture, we want to be able to show that on a piece of paper, typically to show a builder or a client, and you can't imagine scaling this piece of furniture up to fit it onto a page. You would want to scale it down to make it fit on a piece of paper. That's what scale is all about in architectural drawing. It's about trying to represent something accurately, whether it be this piece of furniture or a house, but then shrinking it down to a scale that fits on a piece of paper. So we now know that to draw something to scale, it's an accurate representation of an object, just at a smaller version of itself. Do you think that drawing we did before, say if we drew this at 45 centimeters on a piece of paper, do you think that would be a scale drawing? Yes, this would be a two scale drawing if we were to draw this on a piece of paper at 45 centimeters long. That's because it's an accurate representation of itself. Although it hasn't been scaled up or scaled down, it is still to scale. In fact, you would call this at a scale of one to one. And you might have seen this scale indicator before drawing something at one to one. You might have also seen one to 100, maybe one to 500 or maybe one to 67 for some reason. What this means for us is that in this drawing at one to one, anything in the drawing with a size of one would have a real life size of one. It is a scale ratio of one to one. For every one millimeter in the drawing, it represents one millimeter in real life. So what would it mean to draw at one to 100 or one to 500 or one to 67? Drawing at a scale of one to 100 would mean that for every one millimeter on the page, it represents 100 millimeters in real life. Drawing at a scale of one to 500 would mean that every one millimeter on the page in the drawing, it's representing 500 millimeters in real life. Drawing at a scale of 1 to 67 would mean that every one millimeter in the drawing would mean it's 82 millimeters in real life. No, that's a joke. It would be 67. It's not 82. 67 millimeters in real life. And you might have noticed that as the scale goes up, so it's gone from 100 to 500, the drawing's actually getting smaller. In fact, 1 to 500 is the smallest drawing here. And 1 to 1000 would even be smaller. It would be half as small as 1 to 500. Sorry, it would be twice as small as 1 to 500. It would be half the size. And really what this is telling us is that the drawing is 100 times smaller than what it is in real life. It is 500 times smaller in 1 to 500 than it is in real life. As the number goes up, the drawing gets smaller. So let's say that you want to draw a house plan on a piece of paper. How do we know what scale to shrink it down to? To draw something to scale, it needs to be accurately represented at a smaller size. You would therefore first need to know the dimensions of what you are drawing, in this case, a house. Whether it be an existing house you're drawing up or a house that you're creating yourself. More importantly, you need to know the length of one part of a house to the other. How long or tall is the footprint of the building? So if the house is 20 meters by 40 meters, you can scale this down and put it on a piece of paper. For example, if I wanna draw this 20 by 40 house on an A4 piece of paper, which is what I've got here, to do that, I've chosen the scale out of the air one to 100 because it's easier to work with. The drawing will be 
100 times smaller than what it is in real life. To work out the size of this 1 to 100 drawing, we would need to go 20 meters divided by 100 because we're dividing it by 100 times smaller. And this would equal 20 centimeters. So the length of the house will be 20 centimeters on the page but in real life, it's still 20 meters. If you work in different units that aren't metric, don't worry, this is more about the method rather than the actual calculations. So then to work out how long 40 meters would be in the drawing, you would have to go 40 meters divided by 100, which would equal 40 centimeters. So therefore to draw this house on a piece of A4 paper, it would have to be 20 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Now notice how easy it was to divide that number by 100. This is why you always see architects working in scales such as 1 to 10, 1 to 50, 1 to 100, 1 to 500, 1 to 200, and not 1 to 67, 1 to 300, 1 to 750, which is just random. And I say this because I often see architecture students students doing this. It's just not good practice. It's making it so much harder for yourself because you have to then work out what's 20 meters divided by 67 and it's just no you don't want to do that. Make it easier for yourself when drawing and then for the audience when trying to read the drawings um, by just sticking to conventional scales of 1 to 100, 200, 500, keeping it at even numbers that are easily dividable divisible, whatever that word is. So let's recap. An architectural scale drawing is a drawing that is showing and representing something in real life accurately to a specific scale that is shrunken or enlarged. Yeah. Now architects will typically only shrink their drawings because you don't want to try and enlarge when you're drawing buildings or furniture or people because it's going to make it really, really big. The idea behind drawing to scale is to make things smaller so that you can fit it onto a page and make it all nice and neat. A scale of one to one is representing something at an exact size of what it is in real life. For every one millimeter in the drawing, it's representing one millimeter in real life. A scale of one to 100 though, is trying to show something 100 times smaller than what it is in real life. One to 500 is even smaller, which is 500 times smaller than what it is in real life. And one to 1000 would be double that. It would be 1000 times smaller than what it is in real life. To draw a scaled floor plan drawing, you first need to know what the dimensions of the space is at one to one. What are the dimensions of it in real life? For example, this roller is 45 centimeters. I can therefore scale that down to one to 10, which would be 4.5 centimeters if I wanted to do that, but you first need to know the actual dimensions of the thing. You can therefore then choose a paper size and a scale that you want to draw in, depending on what it is that you're trying to represent. If you want to show something at more detail, you would use a bigger paper size with a smaller scale. So it would be like one to 10, one to 20, as in smaller scale, it means it's going to be bigger. And if you want to show something with less detail, whether it be a site plan or a location plan, something that's showing a massive lot of things with little detail, you would use something like one to 500 or one to 1000 as that is smaller, but it's showing a lot more. Lastly, stick to conventions when drawing in scale. Don't use one to 67 or one to 75, 73. I don't know why you would want to do that. Just don't do it. And if you want to get notified when I post the next video of this series, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below make sure you've ticked that bell click that bell little button thing there while you're down there please do hit the like button it really does help out i really do appreciate you guys watching it all the way through let me know down in the comments below have you ever struggled with drawing floor plans because i sure as hell did and you know now that you've watched this video i hope it has helped some bit so thank you guys so much and i'll catch you in the next video take care